High Mission Control. This is Megan Pringle from WBAL. Can you hear us okay? We heard you loud and clear, Megan. This is Megan Pringle from WB. Great. Is that Colonel Verts? It is. Good to talk to you. Well, great to talk to you. Good morning. I have so many questions for you. Tell us what that landing was like. Yeah, that was amazing. I had only flown on the space shuttle before, and um, taking off on the Soyuz rocket was, was really cool. It was a little bit different. Um, but it was it was pretty spectacular. A lot of G-forces, a lot of banging when the engine shut down, and uh, it was definitely a ride that I will remember for a long, long time. Since you've been there, and I know it hasn't been long, but what's been the biggest surprise or, or possibly adjustment to you, either physically or just emotionally? You know, the... Um, the thing that I was surprised about was how much easier it was this time to adjust to space. Last time was my first space flight, and this is my second space flight. And uh, I just adjusted a lot quicker. There's still a few things. Your head gets stuffy because all the fluid floats up in your head. So there's a little bit of that. But uh, for the most part, when I got here, it was like riding a bike. I, re I remembered everything uh, just like I had done a few years ago. It's so exciting for us to have someone local do something so incredible, and it was so much fun to watch Reed Wiseman. So is there a little bit of pressure because he did so much tweeting and interaction with social media? Is it tough um, to, to compete with that? Are you going to try to have some sort of interaction and, and uh, I guess, create a following or at least an interest? Well, there's no competition. I can never compete with Reed Weissman. Um, but Reed is awesome. He's also, as you know, a fellow uh, Baltimore native. Actually, I was just down in the cupola. I took some unbelievable pictures of a sunset we just had over South Asia. Uh, so I will be tweeting. Astro Terry is my uh, Twitter and Instagram handle, and I'll, I'll try and send out some pictures. The views here are just spectacular. Um, I saw a sunset. The first sunset I saw on station yesterday the moon and Venus were right next to the sun. They all set at the same time, and uh, it was amazing to see the moon kind of burble as it went mm. behind the atmosphere. The views are, are not like anything on Earth, so I'll definitely be sharing them as much as I can. I think that'll be really exciting for people, and that's something they're really going to enjoy. Um, you haven't been there long, and it seems like already you've seen some stunning images. Is there anything that you're looking forward to seeing the most or, or an area of Earth that you're really excited to see what it looks like from a different vantage point? You know, I'm just excited to have six months to live here and really get to know the Earth well. Um, on my first flight, the way the orbital mechanics worked out, I was over America at nighttime all the time. And so far, the last two days, it's been, uh, we just launched basically yesterday, so I, I kind of just got here. Um, but uh, I still haven't had good views of America, so I'm looking forward to seeing Baltimore and, and the Rocky Mountains and, you know, as much as I can of my own country. Right. You're a horse racing fan. Are you going to watch the Preakness from there? Yeah, we'll be watching. Well, well I, I should still be here during the Preakness. Yeah, it depends on the timing of the landing, but that's... Uh, I, I will be here for opening day for that's the Orioles true. and hopefully the Super Bowl for the Ravens and um, we got a lot of sporting events to look forward to. Butch here, my crewmate, station commander Barry Wilmore, a big sports fan too. Oh, good. Well, that'll be fun. That'll be now. What about um, the hometown aspect? I know it, it's got to be very exciting um, for this area, in particular Howard County and Columbia. If there's any kids that are watching from Oakland Mills High School who may be interested in science, what would you have to say? Oh, my goodness, I just saw an image of you. Look at, <laughs> look at you guys. Can you do that again? Show us what that's like with the football and, and you, sort of walk you, us through what that's uh, like. So you just, got the, you just now got the video downlink, huh? We've been spinning and doing all kinds yes, of stuff. Yes, I've been listening to you, but I haven't been able to see you. Well, we've probably been watching it. I, this is just my first opportunity to see it. Okay, so go ahead. Since you're both sports fans, and I love that you're representing the Orioles, have you, play, have you had, like, a game of catch? <laughs> well, we just got the football out. This is our first game of catch. But actually, one of the really cool things about living in space is 
learning is learning how to throw something to your crewmate because on Earth, when you throw something, it drops, and in space, it doesn't drop. And so you have to retrain your brain on how to throw things in a straight line. I know that we're going to be following you for quite some time, so we'll have to look forward to the football skills um, probably improving and, and, and maybe baseball as well. Are you, uh, <laughs> do you have a position that you're going to play? Are you going to be like the running back of the International Space Station? Well, I think I would definitely, my 40-yard dash time would be pretty good since we're moving 17,000 miles an hour. <laughs> I'm hoping he's a running back because I'm going to be the when defensive I'm... linebacker. <laughs> yeah, you're a big sports fan, I hear. <laughs> oh, yeah, I so, watch it on um, occasion. We thought we'd represent all the major sports in America right now with the football and the hockey and the baseball. So, And we're colorful as well. Exactly. Well, hopefully no rivalries uh, in, in space. That, that could get messy. Now, what about... Um, yeah, it's, Kurt, I think I, Butch I was, and I are safe. It's not like Orioles and Yankees. Of... Go ahead. <laughs> I think you were asking um, about I Oakland Mills High School and uh, what, the, what to tell kids. Sorry, I'll, yes, I'll anyone, answer the kid question first real quick. So we're, it's a little bit of a time delay. Water. Yeah, I would say um, if you have a dream, pursue it. You never know what's going to happen. And if you have uh, something that you're interested in, if you have some God-given talents, go ahead and pursue those. And uh, don't don't tell yourself no. Don't let you know. Go ahead and and go for it. Do you want to give a shout out to anyone in Howard County or Columbia at all from space? <laughs> well, I'll say hi to my mom. Uh, Evelyn and Jack Colson, they're there on, on the Eastern Shore of Graysonville. And I've got a new nephew. My cousin Kristen just had a little boy, Cameron, so I'll say hi to him. Uh, Aunt Helen, Aunt Pat, Uncle Tom. I got a lot of, I got a lot of relatives back east there, right? and uh, a lot of them got the chance to watch the launch from the Goddard Space Flight Center. So that was really, uh, that was really a thrill for them. One thing that I read, I, I do follow you on Twitter, and I thought it was interesting that you mentioned um, your last meal while you uh, were still on Earth, and it was shepherd's pie. Is there anything that you're going to miss the most or really look forward to when you do return? You know, everybody asks that. I think there's some basic things like taking a shower. There's no showers up here. We just use a wet towel. Um, and the food, of course, is a big thing. Uh, the food's pretty good here. Uh, it's better than what I would be cooking for myself if I were a bachelor. So, um, but I think just basic things like that you miss. <laughs> the smells of Earth, you know, a rainy day or, or going to the beach. I can say that I'm going to miss the fact that Terry can't take a shower as well. <laughs> yeah, that must, get, um, that must get tough if you are up there and your, your crewmates are smelling a little rank. Or do you get used to that? Well, uh, this is only my second day here, and I haven't exercised yet, so there's still 5.9 months to go. <laughs> well, you'll have to bring back a souvenir, a, a sweaty towel or a sock or something, and, and come back to the newsroom and let us know. Listen, before we go, is there anything else that you want to add? I know you said some pretty inspiring things um, about kids who are possibly interested in science. Anything else you want to say from space? Well, I'll just say um, it's a real, uh, um, this is an amazing machine. This is one of our steps as we move out into the solar system. This is step one. And it's great to be here with an international crew. We have an Italian astronaut and three Russian cosmonauts. Uh, we get along great. We're, we're really enjoying our time with them. Some of our Russian friends were just taking pictures of me and Butch doing our first press conference together. So the international cooperation of the space station is, is really amazing. But looking out at night, looking back at Earth, I love doing it. There's nothing like it. But looking out at the blackness and you see the moon and planets out there, that's where we're eventually going to be going. And that's uh, one of the coolest things of being here is just being part of that first step. And station, this is Houston ACR. That concludes the WBAL-TV portion of the event. Please stand by for a voice check from WKRN-TV.
Nation. This is WKRN TV. How do you hear me? Nashville. Hello. We have you loud and clear. Hey, that is what we like to see. Captain Butch Wilmore, one of our own Mount Juliet native Tennessee and Tennessee Tech grad, along with Captain Terry Burt, and of course, sporting your Pred sweater. That's what we like to see. Both of you guys, sports fans, do you get to watch? You know, we do. NASA's got a great system. They can uplink live games. And, of course, there's several games that we can ask to get taped. And uh, they'll send them up in a special uh, section for our, uh, we can watch on our computer. So, yeah, we can stay in, we can stay in touch. Well, we certainly like to see that. All right, Captain Butch, we want to start with you. Obviously, you're our hometown guy. Uh, for the first time, you took over as commander in charge of the ISS. I know that this is something you've worked hard for. How appreciative are you of what you get to do? I can tell you, it's uh, just being here. And like right now, I'm floating. Um, and just, just this, it's, it's very, very humbling uh, to have this opportunity because there's so many people that would love to do it and, and love, to, love to just experience it for a few moments, and we get to do it for six months. So in that respect, like I said, it's very humbling, and it is uh, obviously very challenging to finally get to the point where you can be here. So grateful for all the people along the way that helped out and trained us. All of our trainers, they're fantastic. And uh, like I said, just an, just an amazing place. You say you've been there, you're going to be there for six months. I know your first space flight was 11 days. So what is the big difference when it comes to training and actually being up there for such a long period of time? For such a long period of time. Well, one of the main things, the space station is very large. It's about as long as a football field and wide as a football field with numerous systems, numerous capabilities, a lot of science that we do up here, a lot of payloads. So as far as the magnitude of the training, the training started for Terry and I both about two and a half years ago. So it's a long training flow because there's a lot that we have to, you know, pound into our brains. So in that respect, that's the main thing. Certainly the shuttle flights were, were very busy, very detailed, uh, but certainly not as much uh, to know as far as the, the size and the different systems of the station. So I'd say that's the, that's the biggest difference. I know many of us just can't imagine what it is like in space. It's very neat to see what you guys are able to do while we're talking to you. Not that there is a typical day there, but what is a normal day for you on the space station? Well, a normal day for me starts with usually a flip. So I'll do this first thing in the morning just because, like I said, just because you can. And that's always exciting the way to start the day. And then, of course, uh, we have about two and a half hours a day that we're scheduled to work out uh, with some resistive exercise and also aerobic training. You can kind of see this on the side right here. This is our space bicycle. And we also have a treadmill that we run on. So we do that two and a half hours a day every single day just about. Uh, to keep ourselves physically conditioned, to fight uh, muscle atrophy and bone loss, those type of things. So we've come a long way in the past decade of learning what we need to do to combat those. So that's a big part of it. And obviously, the different various tasks, the science that we do is uh, ongoing uh, every single day, various different science uh, aspects. And of course, there's maintenance as well. Just like in your home, your potty breaks. Well, our potty breaks too. And uh, we have to fix that and other things. Uh, and there's also just upkeep. You know, you've got to clean the vents and, and vacuum and do all those type of things. That's kind of normal. We typically do that on Saturday. So uh, the, the day is very, and that's probably the best part about it, is the variety. There's such a, such a variety of things that we have the opportunity to take part in. Well, I know a new crew just joined you up there. And Terry, I think you are on that crew. What is the debriefing and the welcoming process like? Yes, I launched actually yesterday. Um, and Butch and uh, Sasha and Yelena were ready for us. We opened the hatch. They were all very excited to see us. And uh, they had a, had a good meal for us down in the Russian segment, a lot of food, which actually we were all starving because we hadn't eaten for probably eight or ten hours. So uh, it was really fun. In the Soyuz, you're really cramped. You're sitting like this in this very small capsule for about six or eight hours, like I said. And so by the time we got here, getting into the station, this is big, giant, open um, uh, area. So that was, that was fun to all of a sudden all feel like you're in open space. 
Well, Captain Butch, uh, you are there until March, and I know you guys get this question a lot, but what do you miss most about being here? You know, honestly, this is such a unique place with such unique experiences every single day that I can honestly say that I really don't miss much. I, I don't miss not having a hamburger because the food here is different. I don't miss not having french fries because the food here is different. I don't miss not having to mow my grass, though I love mowing my grass because the, the variety of things here is so very different. I'd say the one thing I miss, I miss my church. I miss my church family. Uh, so that's one thing that I do miss. And other than that, um, like I said, the experience is so different. There's, there's, there's too much to occupy our minds to, to really miss a lot. Well, obviously, this is your hometown news, and the people of Mount Juliet, Nashville, all over Middle Tennessee and Tennessee are so proud of you. Uh, what do you have to say to the people of Mount Juliet? I have to say that's God's country. Every time somebody asks me where I'm from, I tell them that's the first thing I say is God's country, and that's what I truly believe. And uh, y'all live in a wonderful place, and I say, go Smashville. <laughs> That's what we like to hear. Hey, they are playing great right now as well. I, I think you're a Vols fan as well. There's another Butch in charge over there for the Big Orange. What do you think about the job he's doing? Hey, you know, it's, uh, they're, they're getting going here. I know they lost this weekend in a close-fought match, but uh, things are turning around. We got, uh, we got high expectations for the years to come. All right, last question for you guys, for anybody that is watching this and is seeing what you guys are doing, maybe kids that, hey, one day I want to do this, what would your advice be to them? Uh, the main thing is I think a lot of people have said it, and I agree, and that's uh, do what you love. If you've got a passion about something, pursue it, whatever it may be. And uh, ultimately, you're, you're looking for uh, happiness in your life and uh, how you can support and help others. And that's the main thing. And you never know uh, if you put a lot of effort into something where it might lead, truly. So that, that'd be the main thing that I'd say. All right, Captain Terry Verts, Captain Barry Butch Wilmore, Mount Juliet's own. Thank you so much for joining us. We are really honored to speak to you. And we are very proud of you, Captain Butch. Thank, Thank you. you. Super is our pleasure. We've had a ball. Station, this is Houston ACR. Thank you. That concludes the event.